All right, uh, good evening everyone, welcome to tonight's audit and governance uh, meeting Wednesday the 20th. Uh, just a quick reminder that it is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube later on. Uh, first of all, we've got uh, apologies for absence, I think everyone's here. Uh, item number two is minutes of the previous meeting. Look for somebody to move. Uh, Councillor Clark and second. Uh, Councillor Fergood, all those in favour? Uh, unanimous. Uh, item number three, declarations of interest. None. Uh, item number four, update from external auditors, and I'll pass over to the representative from Assets. Thanks, Chair. Um, I just wanted to provide a verbal update, really, on the progress that we've made um, following our, our interim visit. Um, we will be bringing a formal update paper to the next audit committee, um, which will be our progress report detailing um, some more specifics around the work that we've done. Um, so we've had two weeks of interim work, which took place week commencing the 4th of March and week commencing the 11th of March. I um, want to really thank Jo and, and her team for the excellent engagement that we've had with um, herself and the wider team. We've really made great progress. Um, against the planned work that we wanted to achieve. Um, we've had a number of um, days on site as well during that interim process, which has been really useful for making sure that we are closing down queries quickly as well. Um, in terms of other updates, we have um, started the process for the housing benefits work as well. So meetings have gone in the diary and introductions have been made to start that piece of work. Um, as well as um, introductions being made to the um, council's valuer as well, so we can get the ball rolling with some um, of the external conversations we need to have around that. Um, and then finally, just an update from a value for money perspective. So the work is starting with regards to VFM. Um, meetings are going in the diary over the next month to make sure that that, that work is being started and progressed as much as we can too. Um, but there's, there's nothing else to bring to your attention at this point, no findings to report, but as I say, we'll bring a formal report to the next audit committee. Cheers. Uh, anybody got any questions on that? Uh, item number five is the Internal Audit Plan and Charter 24-25, and I'll pass over to Andrew. Cheers. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present my report on the internal audit plan and updated audit charter for 2024-25. Additionally, I've presented an update on the global internal audit standards. I'm seeking comments on and, and endorsement of the 2024-25 internal audit plan and the audit charter. And I'm also asking the committee to note the updated global internal audit standards. As part of the arrangements for internal audit and in compliance with the public sector internal audit standards, there is a requirement that I present both the audit plan and updated audit charter for endorsement by Audit and Governance Committee each year. The audit plan for 2024-25 is attached as Appendix 1 and is directly linked to the Council's corporate risks. The plan was agreed with the Council's Chief Executive and circulated to members of the Executive Leadership Team. In addition, assistant directors were consulted on the plan for 2024-25 and their comments are incorporated into, into the planned work for next year. It should be noted that the detailed audit plan for 2024-25 is an indicative plan and will be adapted if required due to potential changes in the risk appetite of the Council and also any rising issues that need to be reviewed by internal audit during 2024-25. If changes are made to the plan, this will be presented to the committee. The planned work for 2024-25 includes 250 audit days, which is a slight increase from the 240 for 2023-24, and this is in line with similarly sized authorities. Committee should note that following the appointment of the IT auditor contractor, an audit needs assessment is currently being completed, and this may affect the indicative IT audit plan as outlined in Appendix 1. Annually, I refresh the audit charter, and this is attached as Appendix 2. Updates to the charter are highlighted in yellow, and I would like to draw your attention 
to the initial changes made referencing to the implementation of the new global internal audit standards. As part of the ongoing development in internal audit, there has been an extensive review of the international professional practices framework, and this has led to the introduction of all new global internal audit standards, and these were included in Appendix 3. It should be noted that the new standards take effect from January 2025, so we're currently in a transition period. Appendix 4 contains additional guidance in respect to public sector organisations. There is a national exercise being undertaken to map the old standards to the new, and once this exercise has been completed, I will bring this to, to this committee a further report outlining any changes required. I'm more than happy to take any questions and observations you may have. Uh, Chairs, Andrew, anyone got any questions or comments? What's that, sorry? So it's comparative and clear, thank you. Uh, so we're asked to make comments on and endorse the 24-25 proposed draft internal audit plan as Appendix 1 and audit charter as Appendix 2 and recommend point two notes the updated global internal audit standards for implementing by January 25 at Appendix 3 and the effects on public sector organisations Appendix 4. Just for a mover. Uh, Councillor Clark. Second up. Councillor Thurgood. All those in favour? Unanimous. And we will move on to item number six, which is the final accounts 23-24, accounting policies and action plan. And I'll pass over to the Assistant Director of Finance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the purpose of the report is to advise members of the proposed accounting policies for 2023-24 and to provide an outline of the corporate requirements that will need to be achieved in order to produce the Council's annual statement of accounts for 23-24. So the report includes six recommendations. The first one is that the proposed accounting policies for 23-24 attached in Appendix A are approved. So there are no changes this year, but it is considered good practice to report them to Audit and Governance Committee each year. The second recommendation is that should any changes to the accounting policies be required as a result of the recently announced SIPFA LASAC consultation, authority is delegated to the Executive Director of Finance in consultation with the Chair of Audit and Governance Committee to amend these as required. Um, this is as a result of SIPFA um, LASAC, which is the Local Authority Accounts Advisory Committee, have recently announced a consultation on short-term measures affecting the Code of Practice to aid the recovery of reporting and audit, including an option to simplify the measurement of property, plant and equipment using a specified indexation and reduce disclosures for pension reporting. So that consultation is um, currently ongoing and doesn't end until the 28th of March. Um, we're expecting that any changes are likely to be optional, but in case we do have to make any amendments to our accounting policies, hence that recommendation has been added to the report. The third recommendation is that the target of 31st of May 24 for closure of the final accounts and production of the statement for 23-24 be approved. Um, Legislation detailed in the Accounts and Audit Amendment Regs 2022 requires the Council to prepare a draft statement of accounts by the 31st of May, approved by the Council's CFO, the Executive Director of Finance, and a committee of the Council to approve the statement and for the Council to publish the statement together with the Auditor's opinion by the 30th of September. So in recent years, there has been an extension to the usual deadline for the publication of the draft statement of accounts at 31st of July as a temporary measure. Due to the significant and unprecedented backlog of outstanding audit opinions, DLUC have recently undertaken a consultation to seek views on amending the accounts and audit regulations to enable audit opinions up to and including 2223 to be cleared by September this year and proposing a recovery period with amended timelines for publishing audited accounts from 2324 to 2728. That consultation closed on the 7th of March, and we've not yet received any results of that. And um, so 
in the interim, we'll, we're going to continue to aim to complete our first draft of the Statement of Accounts in line with the current statutory deadline of the 31st of May. So the key issues affecting the achievement of the deadlines are detailed in Appendix B. The fourth recommendation is that staffing resources are committed to the provision of appropriate information and support in order to meet the published timescales and that the committee receive progress updates if required. And at Appendix C, um, there's more information detailing the items that we need from other service departments in order to meet the deadline. The fifth recommendation is also that CMT receive a fortnightly update until completion of the audit. So again, key milestones and dates will be kept under review by the finance team and any material variances or issues will be reported to CMT with proposed remedial actions. And finally, recommendation six is that the statement is presented to this committee before the end of September 2024. And so again, between completion of the statement at the end of May and the planned conclusion of on-site audit in September, a substantial amount of work will be required, liaising with the external auditors to ensure an unqualified audit report. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Uh, anybody questions or comments? No. Um, so we've got the six recommendations there. Uh, obviously, Joe's just read them out, so I won't repeat that. Um, looking for a mover. Uh, Councillor Doyle, seconder. Uh, Councillor Park. All those in favour? Unanimous. So the point number seven, uh, audit and governance committee timetable. Uh, we've only got one meeting left coming up this year, which is on the 24th of April. Uh, anybody got any questions for that upcoming meeting? No? That was a swift one, everyone. Uh, thank you for your attendance and thank you for the officers and Azettes for uh, coming. And I will close the meeting.